This is part two of the milliometer project I showed earlier. Uh, we looked at uh, some of the performance results from uh, previous measurements that I did and the design and the PC board. This is the schematic uh, which is uh, used to generate the PCB for the milliometer that I finally fabricated. The previous one had some errors which I fixed in this version. Um, here are a few things still missing. Uh, one of the decoupling caps on the 5 volt supply is not shown which was added as well. So the input is basically the power supply is a 9 volt supply, external DC supply, unregulated that goes into the LM7805 which is a 5 volt output, positive output that drives um, two ICs here. One is the voltage doubler IC which is the max 680 which creates approximately 10 volts plus and minus that's called VP and VM and uh, the 5 volt supply is called VCC the 5 volts is also used to drive a timer IC the, the famous uh, 555 IC which generates a train of pulses and the uh, rate at which these pulses are generated is controlled by this uh, potentiometer the capacitor is fixed um, so the pulse width is actually fixed in uh, for this one I don't need to vary that um, but the pulse strain can be adjusted, the rate at which it appears. The main uh, part of the circuit is really the 5 volt supply driving this um, LT3092, it's a current mirror and the current mirror gets a 1.25 volt reference from this chip, the LT1634. Um, the 1634 is uh, Ground is reference to the RN input, uh, the, which is a duct placed across this terminal here, and the 1.25 volt is uh, is um, mirrored across um, by this IC using and it's a current mirror, which generates on the output side uh, a 1.25 volt output, which is then terminated to uh, 51 ohm, four of them in parallel that approximately is 12.75 ohms and uh, with a 1.25 volt uh, on this node you get approximately 100 milliamps through this resistor which is a device under test. So this is a much more complicated way of going about it uh, but the reason I did this was to to be insensitive to, to gain errors uh, because uh, I wanted to basically have a fixed gain but have the offsets to be uh, basically be cancelled by the offset cancellation circuit. I wasn't particularly interested in or um, particular about getting an accurate gain because I could adjust the gain using this uh, resistor in the instrumentation amplifier. So the main instrumentation amplifier is basically the traditional 3 amplifier setup. You have uh, two inputs over here. Uh, for two differential inputs, one comes off the the positive sense input from the resistor, and uh, the negative is basically VINM, which goes into this op amp. The positive goes through this CMOS switch and goes into the second op amp. There's another switch across the two, which uh, shorts out the input uh, for offset cancellation. So I will explain this a little bit more later. And finally, there is uh, the first stage gain is determined by the resistor network here, these resistors over here. So that's approximately set to 10. And this is unity gain on this amplifier. And that is then the output right here, V out, which goes to, uh, you can use it in external uh, multimeter to look at the voltage. So as I mentioned in this one, the output in millivolts is uh, is a resistance in milliohms as opposed to having a factor of 10 that's why having an instrumentation amplifier of gain of 10 is important uh, without having to do mental arithmetic to calculate or uh, to find out the uh, resistance of course you pay the price of uh, having to deal with uh, gain errors and offsets and so on which is not there in the other approaches where you have a pure 100 milliamp current which is can be accurately um, controlled and measured. The offset compensation is done uh, using this amplifier 
uh, that is the LTC1049 which is a very low offset uh, amplifier which has a 2 micro volt offset by specs with a low drift. Uh, the offset is sampled across this capacitor C1 which is one, one microfarad over here. It can increase this to larger value and it will hold the offset for longer period. So uh, in, along with this capacitor and, the, and the, how frequently you update the offset you can uh, get some adjustment in the way uh, the system behaves as far as uh, decay of uh, or leakage in the in this in this uh, capacitor. So the way um, the circuit works as far as the offset cancellation is concerned is during uh, if this three switches were not present, you would have a the input coming in here, the VI and P going in directly into this amplifier. Op amp, uh, the second input going into this, it's get multiplied by 10 and the output comes out here after converting to single ended output here. Uh, with the way the um, this circuit works is um, uh, normally this switch is closed, that means the input is always sampled and during the time you want to do an offset you disconnect the switch, short this one and you connect this switch, this switch to the output over here of uh, input of this amplifier. So it's uh, basically sensing the offset at this node uh, when it's in zero condition over here, when its inputs are zero. The advantage of this is that, that any offsets in any of these amplifiers is basically cancelled out uh, and uh, held at this node over here. So this is normally ground, but because there is an offset here, that creates a negative version of the same offset and places on this node. And that is held as long as this capacitor can hold that voltage. Now um, all the gain errors can be including gain errors in the resistor, mis mismatch uh, of all these 33k resistors, any other um, gain errors, current errors in terms of what, I mean, whatever current you can get here, you can basically adjust that using this uh, R gain resistor, which will, uh, once you have a known resistor, you can set that and uh, once um, the circuit is running, this amplifier takes care of the zeroing continuously as long as your the power supply is connected. So here's the, the updated version of this um, milliometer with the proper uh, cabling. I did uh, added a four um, wire with uh, with this clips so we could actually do a one with our, it will be a simpler measurement now instead of using four wires. And as you can see the zeroed um, value of this is fairly small. It's in the less than uh, one millivolt coming out. That means the offset is being cancelled. Without this offset cancellation, these op amps could easily have um, a few millivolts of offset, best case, and that is amplified by a factor of 10, which would actually increase the offset to possibly 20 or 30 or even higher millivolts. Uh, so right now, and of course this depends on how good, how strong this uh, short is actually if you if I put some pressure on it this even drops to lower value. So there is some contact resistance there and uh, the way I connected it, it's in the several hundred micro volts of uh, micro ohms of resistance as you can see over here. So I'm pretty satisfied with this. Uh, it will remain this at this level indefinitely uh, and once I put in a real resistance uh, we can actually measure the true resistance. So if I can ignore this half a milliohm or so or less of a resistance, that uh, is a fairly good measurement, I feel. So here's a piece of wire which is fairly uh, not that long, uh, maybe about a foot or so. And it's not very thick wire, um, but the resistance is definitely measurable. And um, you can see it's on the order of 38.7 milliohms. And uh, that's fairly stable as you can see. And uh, one of the improvements I can make, of course, is to only sample the output when when this switch is uh, turned off. So I should I should not sample the the output when this is being offset. Uh, that is offset calibration is going on. So that's one of the improvements I could make. But I, even without that, the output resistance doesn't change that much uh, once the offset is held in this on this particular C1 cap uh, it basically will keep the output voltage fairly stable 
as long as you don't disturb the measurement too much. So here's another measurement of a 2 ohm resistor. Um, I believe the actual resistances are 1.996 for this particular one. Um, but this one right now it's reading 1.992 or so. And it of course will depend on exactly where I connect this terminal. So it's very sensitive to that. Um, and the pressure that it applies because of the contact. So it's in the order of 1.99. 2526 in that neighborhood and um, it matches fairly well with the previously taken measurement uh, several months ago. You can compare with the next one over here on the right. These are all different because they're going to be slightly different from each other. Previously it read 1.983. And now it's reading 1.9814. So, as you can see, it's pretty accurate. And I think uh, the previous measurement was done with the four different wires, and uh, there was probably a difference in that setup. So, again, I'm pretty happy that it's remaining fairly consistent. So, that concludes uh, this little demo of the milliometer, uh, the main reason I did this was to explore the use of a non-zeroing type uh, approach which I find annoying to do every time I have to make a measurement I don't want to zero it out and that zeroing can also cause some errors uh, because that's not um, repeatable sometimes uh, there can be some drift whereas this measurement is always being updated continuously and the only source of error is the gain error which uh, you can do a one-time calibration of the gain with a known resistor and that should uh, last for a long time as long as you don't uh, disturb that setting too much and, and uh, one of the main uh, features or one of the important uh, characteristics of this is that it only depends on the final one gain setting resistor in there which is the R gain resistor and it takes care of all the gain error mismatches in the resistors and the instrumentation amplifier as well as a current source which need not be 100 milliamps it can be 99.5 or it can be 90 milliamps whatever you feel like uh, as long as you calibrate that out uh, you're good to go with this type of an approach so hope uh, this was informative uh, see you in the next video